I want to welcome to our coverage at this time a legend in Indian broadcasting, the most formidable television news anchor in India, my colleague Karan Thapa. Good morning, sir. Welcome. You're a veteran of many elections. In fact, you had this team way back in 98 covering the election for TV today at that time. How do you see this election being different from all the past elections you've been part of? Oh, Rahul, this election is different at least in three critical senses. First of all, it's an election that the country has been waiting for for at least two years. The pent-up excitement is much greater than anything that we experienced in 98 or 99. I suspect that this election in that sense is very similar to the election of 77 which actually toppled Indira Gandhi. The sense of expectation, the sense of bottled up emotion that's going to really pop out like relief when the results come out must be very similar to 77. But there are two other senses. There is clearly a candidate waiting in the wings whose coronation he hopes will happen later on today. And that hasn't been something that's been so clear in any election in recent memory, with the possible exception of uh, 84, when it was quite clear that Rajiv was going to succeed his mother because of the emotional wave that had overtaken the country following her death. And I'd say the third reason why this election is so important is because of the cataclysmic disaster that seems to be, and I underline that word, seems to be staring Congress in the face. Once again, uh, the last comparison would be perhaps 77, but in 77 you only realized the cataclysm that they faced after the results came out this time the disaster looming ahead for Congress is pretty clear and apparent to most people so I think in all three senses this is quite a historic election Narendra Modi has been saying Achhe din aane wale. he's built this whole expectation around him do you really see Modi from day one or within the first six months or one year turning around the India story making a big difference uh, to this country it's a fascinating question because if I was Mr. Modi who's been waiting for at least five to six months for this moment to happen and clearly preparing himself for, himself for it and he has a team that's been thinking in advance, I would imagine that he has a couple of dramatic announcements up his sleeve which will be made clear to us sometime within the first 24, 36 hours. I think he's going to look for a way, and I'm guessing obviously, a look for a dramatic way of setting the tone, setting the tenor right from the first day. But then there's also a honeymoon period and he must have several policy announcements that are planned for that as well. So I think you're going to see a very active Prime Minister from day one capturing attention with something that is surprising and dramatic and then a whole slew of policy announcements thereafter. If he doesn't do that, there's a real danger that he's missed an opportunity that he could have grabbed. There are people who love Modi, then there are those who hate Modi. Several people have been saying, we'll pack our bags, we'll leave India if Modi were to come to power. They've been saying this uh, in private conversations for a very long time now. Do you think Narendra Modi will persecute or go after people who he believes our news traders who've stood out against him, who've opposed him. He says, I'm going to be a PM. Do you think bad times are coming for those who hate Modi in the same way as good times are coming for those who love him? You know, you began by asking, do I believe that? No, I certainly don't believe that. Do I hope it won't happen? Yes, I hope it won't happen. Do I think it will happen? No, I don't think it will. Because I think Mr. Modi is an extremely astute man. He knows that this could be his only chance to prove that he's an extremely successful Prime Minister and he's going to be ready to reach out to people whose cooperation and support he needs to make his Prime Ministership a success. So if I was Mr. Modi, coming to office, knowing that there are groups of people in this country who are apprehensive, I would find immediate ways of reassuring them. And there are just a few hints he might have already thought along those lines. He gave an interview to IANS roughly two weeks ago when he was asked, how would he respond to the enormous concern minorities and Muslims in particular have of a possible prime ministership that he might fulfill in the next 10, 12 days? And his answer was, not only will I be fair and just, but I must be seen to be fair and just. And I thought that was a very important sentence and statement by him. And I believe that if he's thinking along those lines, somewhere in the very first few hours or days, he will reach out to people who are apprehensive, and I suspect the Muslims in particular, to reassure them that they have nothing to worry about. Whether they accept that at face value, or whether they then look for greater proof, that's up to them. But I think an astute man, poised to make history as he believes he is, will not want to leave obstacles in his path which he can easily remove by astute statements. And this sort of statement is so much easier to make when you've got a huge majority behind you and you are Prime Minister. Very fascinating. So you're seeing Narendra Modi change. Achut Yagnik, you've seen Modi at very close quarters. Would you agree with that? I consider him as an authoritarian leader. I also seen during last 12 years or so as a vindictive person. But now I think uh, as a Prime Minister, 
he he may remain authoritarian but i think that the, he would like to not to be vindictive